what's going on everybody in today's video i'm going to explain the use state react hook and near the end of this video we're going to create a reactive counter program so sit back relax and enjoy the show i haven't explained what react hooks are yet a react hook is a special function that allows functional components to use react features without writing class components this was a change made in react version 16.8 basically we no longer need to write class components we can write function-based components that use React hooks to use React features. There are many React hooks. If a function begins with use, it's probably a React hook. Use state, use effect, use context, use reducer, use callback, and more. Use state is the most widely used. Use state is a React hook that allows the creation of a stateful variable and a setter function to update its value in the virtual DOM. Basically, by using the use state hook, we can create not just a variable, but a stateful variable. When you update this variable, that change will be reflected in the virtual DOM. Normal variables don't. When you use the useState hook, you're given a variable and a setter function specifically for that variable. So what we'll do in this example is create a new component. Going to our source folder, we're going to create a new file. We'll name this component my component. We use React hooks in function-based components, so make sure you're not writing a class component. With this component, we will export it. Export default my component. Then be sure to import this because I'm probably gonna forget if we don't do it now. So we will import my component from its location dot forward slash my component. And this is a JSX file. Let's return one my component. And we are ready to begin. In order to use a React hook, we need to import it. At the top of this component, we will import the React library. However, we don't need the entire React library. We can use object destructuring to extract individual variables or functions. I would just like the useState function. We don't need the entire React library. From its location, React. We now have access to this useState function. Using the useState function, we'll create a stateful variable and a setter function to update that variable. So let's declare const. We're going to use a set of straight brackets for array destructuring. Equals use state function. The useState function returns an array with two elements, a variable and a setter function. We're going to use array destructuring to destructure these two elements. We'll create a stateful variable for name. Then we're given a setter function specifically for this variable. A common naming convention is to type set, then the variable name with camel case naming convention. And that's it. If we ever need to change the value of the stateful variable, we have to do so with this setter. It's a function. At the bottom, we're going to return a div element Within this div element, we'll create a paragraph element and a button. We'll begin with a paragraph element that has text of name. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I will insert some JavaScript using curly braces. Let's display our name. Following our paragraph element, let's include a button. The button will have an on click attribute equal to a JavaScript function. So we need a set of curly braces to embed that. Let's create a function to update name. For the text of the button, let's say set name. All right, now we just need to declare this function. I'll use an arrow function. Const update name equals arrow function. So what would we like to do? Okay, let's attempt to set our name equal to Type your name or some other name. I'm just going to type in SpongeBob. If I click on this button, we should update our name, right? Well, that doesn't appear to work. So if I were to console.log my name variable, then attempt to update it using this button. If I were to go to my console, hold on, I'm going to use let so we can update it. If I attempt to change this name of the variable, it does so within our console, but it doesn't update in React. The virtual DOM is still displaying the previous state. 
So if I would like to display any changes, I will want to use that setter. Instead of setting our name equal to a new value, I'm going to change this back to be a constant. We will use the setter function and pass in a new value. So let me type in a new value. And that should work. We have updated our name. When you use the setter function of a stateful variable, it will trigger a re-render of the virtual DOM. Normal variables don't. That's why the useStateReact hook is useful. We can create a stateful variable. When the stateful variable gets updated with its setter function, it triggers a re-render of the virtual DOM. With the useState function, you can pass in an initial state. Currently, we're not passing in anything. For the initial state, I will set this to be guessed. When I refresh everything and start over, the initial state is guessed, whatever value you pass in to the useState hook. Then I can set my name again to something else. Now we're going to create an age variable and increment it. Const, we're going to use array destructuring. We need a stateful variable, like age, and a setter function for that age. Set age equals use state. If you would like an initial value, you can place that within the use state function. I'll set the initial value of age to be zero. I'm going to copy this paragraph and this button. Change name to be age. We'll create a function to increment age. The text on the button will be increment age. Now we just need this function. Const increment age. I'll use an arrow function. To increment our age, we will use the set age function. Let's take our age plus one. So our initial value for our age is zero. But every time I click on the button, we will update the value of that variable. So every time I click the button, we're increasing our age by one. Or even a different number. This time I'll increase our age by two on each button click. So we start at zero. Then we'll increment by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now this time, we'll create a Boolean variable and toggle it between being true and false. Using the useState hook, we will create const is employed. The setter function will be set is employed equals the useState hook. I would like an initial value of false. Let's create a paragraph element and a button. I will set the text of the paragraph to be is employed. Instead of displaying a Boolean directly, let's use the ternary operator for conditional rendering is employed. If that is true, we'll display yes. Otherwise, no. When we click on the button, let's create a function to toggle toggle employed status. That's kind of a long function name. All right, let's create a function const toggle employed status equals an arrow function. We will use the setter function set is employed, pass in a new value. Let's switch this value from being false to true and true to false every time we click the button. Since this is a Boolean, we can use the not logical operator to reverse it. So let's say not is employed. And let's see if this works. Is employed, nope. Oh, let's change the text on the button too. Toggle status. There we go. All right, when we click on the button, we can toggle this Boolean from being true to false and false to true. And this should happen every time I click the button. As a project, what we're going to do now is create a counter program. So let's close out of my component. We'll create a new component for a counter component, counter.jsx. This will be a function based component, function counter. Then be sure to export it. Export default counter. Going back to our app component, we will import our counter component from its location. 
counter.jsx. Then we will include one counter component. And that's it. In order for us to use the useState hook, we have to import it from the React library. Import React will use object destructuring just to get the useState hook and nothing else from its location of React. All we need is one variable, a counter. Let's say const will use array destructuring, create a stateful variable of count and a setter function for that count. Set count equals the use state hook. Would we like an initial value for count? We would like the initial value to be zero. We'll create a few functions to increment, decrement, and reset the counter. Const increment equals, I'll use an arrow function. To update the count, to increment it, we will use the set count function. The value we'll pass in is count plus one. Then let's do this for decrement. Const decrement count minus one, then reset. Const reset for set count, we'll pass in zero to reset the count. Now we're going to return some elements. We'll also style this with CSS. Let's begin with the div element. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. My div element will have a class name equal to counter dash container. I will create a paragraph element with a class name equal to count display to display the number. For the text of the paragraph, I will insert some JavaScript and display our count variable. We'll create three buttons. For the first, we'll create a button element. This button will have a class name of counter dash button. The on click attribute will be set equal to a JavaScript function. This first button will be the decrement button. For the on click attribute, we will set this equal to the decrement function. For the text on the button, we'll say decrement. And there's our first button. So let's copy this button, paste it. The second button will be for reset. The text will be reset. Then the third button will be increment. On click will be the increment function. The text will be increment. All right, and that's all that we need. Let's check it for functionality to be sure that everything works. We can increment this number. We can decrement it and we can reset it. So for the icing on the cake, let's style it with CSS. Going to our index CSS style sheet, we'll apply the following CSS. Let's select our counter container. Dot counter container. I will text align center. Change the font family. I will pick a sans serif font of Arial with a backup of sans serif. Next, we'll select the count display. Select the class of count display. That would be this number. We'll increase the font size to something massive, like 10 EM. REM works too. Oh, okay, that's a little too big, but I am zoomed in. Actually, you know what? That's perfect. I will set the margin top to be zero to close this gap. And I will set the margin on the bottom to be 50 pixels. Then let's work on the counter buttons next. Select the class of counter button. I will set the width to be 150 pixels. The height to be 50 pixels. The font size to be 1.5 EM. I will set the font weight to be bold. Set the margin to be zero pixels by five pixels. This would be for the left and right of the buttons. 
change the background color. Pick a color that you like. I'm going to use HSL values, though. That's pretty good. I will set the color of the font to be white. Remove the border. Border, none. Set the border radius to round the corners. Five pixels. And change our cursor to be a pointer if we hover over the button. When we hover over the button, I'm going to change the background color of the button. So with the counter button class, with the counter button class, we will select the hover pseudo class. We'll take our background color, decrease the lightness to be 10% darker. There we are. And that is all the CSS styling that we need. We have our counter program. We can increment the counter, we can decrement it, and we can reset it. All right, everybody, so that is the use state react hook. It allows the creation of a stateful variable and a setter function to update its value in the virtual DOM. When you include the use state hook, you're given an array of two elements. We use array destructuring to create a stateful variable and a setter function to update that variable. And well, everybody, that is the use state hook in React.